we had discussed heat transfer mechanism by conduction heat transfer mechanism by convection free and forced convection the third method third mechanism for heat transfer is by radiation radiation is a transfer mechanism from a hot body through electromagnetic uh, waves uh, it doesn't need uh, a medium for transferring the heat so let us say that you have a hot body like this at temperature T1 and it is radiating heat through electromagnetic radiation and let us consider an imaginary boundary here at some distance and it is at temperature T2 which is less than T1. So what is the Q received at this imaginary boundary? The heat in watts is given by this hr into a into delta t this is the thermal coefficient relationship a is the surface area of surface area perpendicular to the radiation h is the thermal radiation thermal coefficient and it is given by another empirical relationship 4 into sigma into epsilon 1 minus phi t1 plus t2 by 2 whole to the power of 3 where sigma is the Boltzmann constant which has a value of 5.67 10 to the power of minus 8 epsilon is the emittance emittance is the energy emitted relative to that of a black body so it's a property of the material and uh, depending upon the material the value of the em emittance will be different uh, let me list down few of the emittance values 0.8 for anodized aluminum black anodized aluminum 0 0.095 for polished aluminum emittance of polished aluminum is less then 0.18 for rough surface aluminum I am uh, mentioning aluminum because most of the heat sinks are made of aluminum 0.33 for tungsten at 1500 degrees centigrade 0 0.07 for polished copper and 0.9 for wood charcoal so these are the some of the typical em emittance values of common material phi is called the shielding factor it is whenever there are many parallel plates so some of the in between plates are shielded but for single and um, two parallel plate system the shielding value is zero so this is the relationship that you can use for uh, finding out the heat uh, received by radiation. The fourth heat transfer mechanism is heat transfer by mass transport. So here uh, movement of a fluid mass is used for transporting heat from one place to another place. It is a common mechanism used in refrigerators where the freon fluid is used for transferring heat from uh, the chamber uh, to uh, an uh, evaporator uh, uh, and then gets uh, exchanged to the ambient through a radiator. Even in the car, the heat from the uh, engine is uh, removed by the flow of water and then get removed out into the external ambient through a radiator. So these are mass transport examples so let us consider a pipe so it's a long pipe so i am going to indicate this by the symbol that it is a very large long pipe so this pipe has inlet and exit so at the inlet you have the flow of this fluid coming in it is cold fluid here and at the outlet the fluid is going out and it is hot fluid so somewhere in between it has accumulated heat and then it is carrying that heat away so the fluid flow here 
this is at temperature T1, this is the cold value, this is temperature T2, this is the hot value. In between we have a Peltier junction, a Peltier element, the terminals of the Peltier element and that is connected to a body which is actually dissipating heat and you want to remove that heat that this body, hot body is dissipating. So this Peltier uh, element is pumping the heat from here into the uh, fluid flow, let us say if it is water, into the water here. So this is the Peltier element and this is the hot body and the Peltier element as usual we have the appropriate DC-DC converter electronics and the powering up from the PV panel and um, uh, delivering the necessary energy for it to act as a heat pump. Now the heat that is flowing from the hot junction of the Peltier into the fluid is QH and what is uh, being removed from the uh, uh, body, a uh, hot body that is dissipating heat is QC and uh, there is an amount of energy that is being pumped into the Peltier through the electrical domain that is E. So QH what is being pumped into the actual water body or fluid body is given by dm by dt m is mass here mass flow cp into t2 minus t1 hot minus cold the hot temperature minus the cold temperature so this is the heat flow relationship for mass transport where dm by dt is called the mass flow rate CP is called the specific heat of the fluid. So it depends upon the fluid and this is delta T. And the specific of the fluid of course is given from, uh, uh, as joules per kg per degree Kelvin and it can be obtained from scientific tables for uh, specific uh, um, fluid material. Now R theta m the thermal resistance for the mass flow rate if you look at this q which is equal to delta t by thermal resistance so you can say it is 1 by this value so the thermal resistance is given by 1 by dm by dt into cp so you see that if the specific heat of the fluid is high then the thermal resistance will come down so if I uh, use a fluid with a very high specific fluid like Freon, you can have a very low thermal resistance. Another important factor that's contributing to heat removal is not actually the what, uh, thermal uh, temperature difference as was in the case of conduction, convection and radiation. Here it is more controlled by this uh, thermal resistance which is highly dependent on inversely uh, proportional to the mass flow rate. By controlling the mass flow rate, that is if I am having a, a pump which is pumping this fluid in, by controlling the speed of the pump, you can uh, regulate the thermal resistance. So that is the nice um, uh, dynamic property of this mass flow, ra flow rate which can be controlled by um, uh, effects, external effects other than temperature difference. So in this way you can remove heat out of uh, uh, a body through the Peltier junction uh, by the mass flow rate mechanisms too.